So if you were born before 2003, you definitely did see one of these iPods on display at maybe a Walmart, Target, Radio Shack. Funny enough, I actually found this exact iPod that's in this video right now from a Radio Shack that's still open in 2021. Well, technically wasn't a regular Radio Shack, it was one of those hybrid ones where it has another store's name. Anyways. Today I'm going to be unboxing an original iPod Touch 4th generation from 2011. This model is 8GB, which I'm still surprised that they put 8GB models in production, considering that 8GB is honestly not a lot of storage for the types of activities that you'd be doing on an iPod nowadays, or even an iPhone for that matter. Like I'm recording this video at 1080p on my iPhone. Hello. And this video file is probably going to be 20% of this iPod's total storage capacity. Let's get into it. See if there's any adhesives that I need to take off first. Yeah, probably. Alright. I didn't prepare ahead of time for this unboxing, so I'm just going to be using a pair of scissors that I just found off my desk. Alright, let's get into it. Oh. How silly of me. There's this little tab on here and I didn't even know it was there. I'm gonna guess that this iPod was on display at this Radio Shack for probably the better part of 10 years because it looks like it hasn't been touched since it was put on that shelf. Man, this is harder than I thought. I think iPods are still packaged like this nowadays, although the plastic isn't as uh, annoying to remove. Oh, there goes the uh, display screen, and now I'm getting my fingerprints all over it. Yippee. <laughs> One common theme that happens throughout most of my unboxing videos, well, the two that I have posted so far, just like the Harry Potter video, is I ruined any type of value that this device probably would have had if I had any intention of being a true collector and not taking it out of the plastic. Oh well. Well, nothing's turning on, so I'm gonna go plug this in, see if I can get anything to work. Luckily enough, I did buy this 30-pin iPod connector a while back, so I won't have any issue finding it. <laughs> A cable to work for this. All right. All right. You know, they need to put clear indications on these because I forgot how frustrating it was figuring out which end goes into the iPod connector. Uh huh. Yep, dead battery. Hey, at least it works. Now we just gotta wait until it turns on. All right, now we're gonna do a quick transition to indicate the passage of time. All right, so good news, the iPod's turned on. Oh, I missed that time. All right, now we're in the setup stage. Close this, let's get funky in 2011 style. Ooh, pretty basic setup. Oh, I miss those, uh, pop-up buttons. All right, now I'm gonna be connecting it to my local Wi-Fi network, so. Oh, I forgot how satisfying the button clicking sounds <laughs> used to be. Wow, this brings back memories. Even though I didn't own this particular iPod myself, I do remember people who had it, and I would always try and use their iPods as much as I could because mine didn't even have a camera on it. So just getting to use that now, it's bringing back so many memories. Especially those silly type of videos that kid, you know, kids used to create when they're in their pre-teens. I'm just on a nostalgia trip because of this now. <laughs> All right, setup process almost complete. Oh, wow. This is trippy. Just getting to see this again is such a surreal experience. 
Wednesday, March 31st, 2021, when I'm recording this video. Old FaceTime. Oh boy. Well. You know, compared to how videos are recorded nowadays, this really doesn't seem all that impressive, but you know, it's still such a nice experience. At least from a nostalgic perspective. So, I'm gonna do a video test with this thing. Okay, now I'm testing the video off of the iPod Touch 4th generation. I can definitely notice that the video is a lot more janky than it is on my iPhone. But hey, that comes with a development of technology. One thing I forgot about this iPod is that there's really no stabilization feature, so what you're seeing is what you're getting. And I can't keep my hand stable whatsoever. Okay, now to other stuff. Videos app, which has now been replaced mostly by Apple TV on modern iPhones and iPods, the old YouTube app. Support for this version of YouTube discontinued somewhere around 2015 or 16. It's quite a shame because I really liked this interface. Back when they still used Google Maps for everything. And this is my home state of New Jersey. Notes. Back when it used to look like a notebook rather than just the blank white screen that we get nowadays. This was actually the first iPod that utilized a reminders app built directly into iOS. I remember uh, going on this for hours and just uh, messing around with the clocks, seeing what time it was in different places of the world when I really didn't know much about the world besides what was in the United States. Game Center, oh boy. Back when it looked like a, a pool table. I'm not gonna bother signing into any of this, right? Oh, well, it's not gonna make me do anything now. Never mind. <laughs> newsstand. Wow. It actually looked like a newsstand. I don't know why I'm so surprised by all this, even though I remember having this. I guess just not having this around for a while just it just makes for a very different experience. Oh, well, the good thing is, is the iTunes store is still up. See, it's got Wonder Woman 1984, which just released on Christmas Day 2020. It's just crazy to see that I could technically buy it and watch it on this iPod. Maybe I might do that. Well, let's see how video playback is, honestly. If it still supports video playback for this device. Oh. This movie could not be played. Eh, I kind of expected that. App Store. I tried this out with one of my other iPods that I don't use anymore. And surprisingly was still able to access that. I'm honestly surprised this still works. Imagine running TikTok on this thing. So back on older iPods, there used to be this function where you can do workout stuff and it was sponsored by Nike and utilized your iPod's interface too. So it would help you when you exercise. Stocks. Yeah, as a young child, I never really understood this. Calculations. Everybody's favorite. Though another awesome thing, you were able to record audio directly from the iPod itself instead of having to plug in a microphone. Because I remember one of the older iPods I used to have, you weren't able to record directly from the iPod itself. So let's test this out one. <laughs> so let's test this one out too. This is an audio test. This is just a test. Had this been an actual emergency, I would not be using this iPod. Thank you. This is an audio test. This is just a test. Had this been an actual emergency, I would not be using this iPod. Thank you. Very fuzzy microphone. Forgot about that. 
Yeah, but what do you expect? This thing is over 10 years old. So much has changed since then. Mobile Me doesn't even exist anymore. That was one of Apple's uh, emailing services before it got replaced completely by iCloud. I, rem I don't remember when that was. Maybe 2012 or 2013? One thing that I am expecting to function quite like normal is the Safari browser. See? Google still loads up, which is honestly pretty good. Now, let's check out if we can watch a YouTube video through this thing. Well, it looks like we hit a dead end here. Uh, video playback isn't really possible on these things anymore. I could try reloading it one more time to see if I can get anything to work. Yep, well, video playback on the Safari browser doesn't work anymore. So, connecting this up, I realized that the total storage of this iPod is only almost 7 gigabytes. But then, with the operating system, it bops it down to almost 4.5. So there's only 4.5 gigabytes of storage in this little thing. So, I've been looking to put some music onto this thing, and the first thing that came to my mind was Fireflies by Owl City. This piece of music just encapsulates the entirety of t the early 2010s in such a meaningful way. You may think I'm being a bit pretentious with this, but I don't care. Oh, and there it is. I'm not going to play too much of this because, you know, copyright infringement, but let's get a taste of what good old 2010s feels like listening to fireflies off of an iPod Touch 4th generation in mint condition. Definitely sounds a bit tinny, but you know, what, do you, what would you expect anyways with these uh, little tiny speakers? And then another thing, too. The album swiping feature. That was a real highlight of the iPods when they first came out. Now, the music app on iPhones doesn't really use this anymore. I also have an Apple TV, so I can literally stream this music from this iPod over to the Apple TV on the other side of my room. But I'm not going to do that right now. Oh, almost forgot. This was the first iPod to take advantage of a notification bar. And this was before the uh, control center underneath was implemented too. And if you wanted to switch between apps, press twice and then you could see what the most recent apps were. This was only available on the iPod Touch 4th and 5th generations. And you also had a bunch of other features too. So, adjust the volume, air, airplay the uh, video display off of your iPod from your iPod to the Apple TV, rotation lock, music controls, easy access to music too. So yeah. So if you were a child back in 2010 or 11 like I was, you would have died to get your hands on one of these. Figuratively, of course, not literally. Honestly, now having... Honestly, having one of these in my possession now, from that Radio Shack that I visited earlier today, this was so worth it. It brings back so many memories of using this, even though I didn't own one myself. But now I do because... Well, that's about it from here. So, thanks for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And click the bell notification to get notified for my latest videos. And also leave a like. I don't know if I mentioned that. Well, as always, thanks for watching.